Welcome to this installment of Data Science Simplified. I am Dr. Mechi Kengla, and I am the founder and chief data strategist of Data Products. Today, we have the pleasure of talking to Dr. Sonia Petrovic about socially responsible modeling, computation, and design. Dr. Petrovic is an associate professor in the Department of Applied Mathematics, the College of Computing at Illinois Institute of Technology. Her research is focused on nonlinear algebra and nonlinear statistics, where she develops, analyzes, and applies statistical models for discrete relational data, such as networks. Prior to joining IIT, she was in the faculty at Penn State Statistics. She is an elected member at the International Statistics Institute, and her research has been supported by NSF, AFOSR, and DARPA. Apart from mathematics and statistics, she loves living in Chicago and watching its spectacular sunsets, traveling, playing bass guitar, dancing, biking, and swimming in Lake Michigan during the summer months only. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia, for visiting with us today. Thank you, Maggie, for having me. It's such a pleasure, and it's so good to see this uh, segment that you do. I actually watch them regularly and it's impressive to see like all the different topics that you guys cover so oh fantastic i would love to come have you come on again and we can talk about more topics for sure i want to hear about <laughs> nonlinear. we can have a discussion about nonlinear versus multilinear. i can bring a bunch of students to tell you <laughs> <laughs> right right so let's get started i want to yep. find out about sorry more um how how would you pronounce it in your in your words what's a one minute version of this initiative sure so i i think people pronounce it in different ways if they can remember the three syllables i say soremo because it sounds like the right phonetic thing to me but you know it's up to interpretation uh so soremo stands for socially responsible modeling uh, but there is also modeling computation and design in the name of the initiative right so what is it? It is about empowering students, this is our tagline, to enact positive societal change that they're passionate about. Why? Because ethical, equitable approaches in computation, modeling, design, they're at the core of many government industry efforts today. I hear about it from many people from industry. Oh, social responsibility. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, and so our students somehow uh, are very much attuned to what's happening in society. And so several faculty at Illinois Tech do have ongoing research efforts and they oversee student projects on these topics. So somehow we're already Soremo active, okay? But this initiative brings these efforts together into a common spotlight. We wanna have a discussion forum. We enable to organically create a think tank to identify future developments. So, so things don't end at the course project or uh, you know, the professor X told me to do Y and so I did it and I'm done. No, we want to identify follow-up questions and propel each of these projects into an equitable solution we can implement citywide or whatever is a community that you're talking about. Oh, that's fantastic. So in other words, one could perhaps reframe this as Surimor is a work, a work based project initiative. <laughs> <laughs> and the, in the words of the youths, right? It's all about being woke in terms of everything you're doing and all the impact you're having around the people around your environment and your right. community. Right. So what inspired you to found Soremo? Uh, I have a short answer and a long answer. And I, my short answer is lack of inspiration for everything 2020. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we went, we, 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 we switched to online teaching in March when the pandemic hit Chicago and I was left wondering, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why are the students signing up? Oh, universities will go under. Will they survive? Why are students signing up to go to school? And I asked valid questions, right? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so I think just nobody cares about stuff unless they have a reason to actually do it, particularly in 2020. And I realized I mean, many people realize, but you know, my personal view is that we have, what we offer at Illinois Tech is technical knowledge and it's very good technical knowledge. That's right. And if you can apply that knowledge to problems that face society, and of course that education increases in value. So universities should, I think, you know, broadly think about how they increase education value, not just, you know, bring bodies in classrooms and have one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. You know, I can have one-on-one -on -one online, but, offer something that through treacherous times they live with, students have something to look forward to. 
how do you make a difference in society? Okay, we have, you know, different ways. For example, I want to be a nurse because that will make me to have me to make a difference. But what if I'm really not good at it? What if I quote, just do math, okay, or English or whatever? How do you make a difference? Well, maybe think about uh, pursuing that passion in whatever the discipline is, and then look for ways within that discipline to have an impact, make a difference and inspire change. And so this is meant, this uh, initiative is meant to fill the needs of those types of students. We do offer technical education, it's already strong. We know how to deal with data. We do statistics, we do analytics, we have Mr. Design, we have the Ethics Center. Put it together and embed that into everyday tech education somehow so the students can continue doing what they actually are good at, but then continue to also make a change at the same time. So these things don't go separate ways. Wow. I don't know so if this is that. something that you think would actually then grow. Maybe the vision is to grow, not just to stay within IIT, but to extend to other universities and other learning institutions as well. I, I mean, I, I thought it should be global immediately. And then I, <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> you can't, you know, we, have, we have a group of faculty, we're working together and it does only make sense to do this at the grassroots kind of level. So start locally, do things you can and then have a model that works. Um, ha you know, it would be great if everybody did this, but obviously we don't necessarily have the best solution or the best idea. So it would be sort of better to have an organic conversation and hopefully this grows. And if it doesn't, that means it wasn't important, but I really don't think that's the case. I think people care about uh, societal issues. So hopefully it will grow. Absolutely. Is this focus only on graduate students or will Sir, Sir Moore uh, include undergraduates as well? So uh, it's funny. It's, it's funny that you asked the question that way because it's the other way around. <laughs> but because it sounds like it's high level research and things that you do and it sounds like graduate project. But here's the thing about um, Illinois Tech, we have undergrads that do lots of projects. We have this interprofessional um, project that everybody does before they graduate. So they already have opportunities at the undergraduate level to do this kind of work. And so we started this initiative focusing on undergrads first but graduate students are not excluded. In fact, some of them will be included in this first cohort of fellows, I'm pretty sure. So it's meant to include every student at Illinois Tech as long as they wanna participate. Oh, wow, yes, nice. So one of the most compelling priorities for Suramor is connected with students with in, connecting students with industry and finding the applications of your research and address societal need, right? So, are you able to share an example of one of such projects in terms of how it is right now or how you envision it to look within the cohort? Right, so um, I think this is, so connecting students to industry and to community is not something that only we do and it's not the only thing we do. So before I give you the examples, I want to clarify uh, just how this comes up because it would sound like I'm taking credit for what other people did. <laughs> which is not what's happening. Right. So our undergrads are well-trained in their co core disciplines. And we have these IPROs where students get to apply their knowledge. And some students have summer internships and they worry about you know, their future jobs and impacts on society. And so what we don't do is we don't reinvent the wheel in terms of uh, making up new projects on top of what students have already done. Instead, we wanna provide a framework under which students can sort of have a holistic educational experience, okay? So we train them in communication. Uh, we focus on the multidisciplinary communication, multi-level delivery of content. I'm talking about talking to other students, other mm -hmm. faculty, other professionals, government, industry. Um, broad introduction to other disciplines and cross-pollination of research ideas. And so we build on the activities that students and faculty already do and mm -hmm. integrate them with some of the foundational homework. I mean, coursework that we're doing. So I don't have a list of projects that we're saying, this is project one, two, three, that Soramo came up with from scratch. No, instead we take what's already done and we try to help. For example, uh, one of my colleagues in my department, Lulu Kang, has a recent work, it's called, uh, let me read, Fair and Diverse Allocation of Scarce Resources. And so it does, didn't involve a student yet, but it's a project that if a student got involved, it would they would be able to talk about equity immediately and do statistics and data science analytics at the same time. And so we would help that student then, or the group of students, uh, explain these ideas to faculty in humanities. 
faculty in biology, faculty in engineering, somebody from the city, somebody from the community, and all those people will bring perspectives that I think, so I think these kinds of conversations that we're looking to build are kinds of conversations that happen in a think tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you bring people together, and I think that's a catchphrase and it sounds cheap almost, but it's actually true. You bring people together and say, look at this idea. And then people who are not from the same background say, oh, have you thought of this? And more often than not, that actually leads to a product, mm -hmm. right? So, or a solution. Yeah. And so one example, I mean, that what motivated actually my thinking about Soremo is my other colleague from the department, Rob Ellis, he supervises a bunch of these uh, uh, course projects. And one uh, from spring 2019 actually used data published by ProPublica, which is a new nonprofit newsroom mm -hmm. that investigates abuses of power. They had a whole series about driven into debt about the traffic enforcement system in Chicago and how they, you know, certain people in certain neighborhoods were getting ticketed more often and sometimes the same car several times a day. Uh, <laughs> and this revealed a bunch of biases. So actually the students did a project uh, about how this unfairly burdened black and poor motorists. Mm -hmm. and they, I mean, the data was there, the data is public and the students did this in the course project and they even got interviewed with, uh, by ProPublica Illinois, but I bet that this could continue. <laughs> so let's pretend I was that student who did this project. And so I'll, you know, I'm an expert in let's say computer science, right? And then I get my bachelor's, hey, I did this project. Where is it? Wouldn't it be better if this, if I was able to say, I worked with a professor in design who helped me come up with a solution that then I gave to the city <laughs> and then we worked together and da, da, da. So like the projects are half done, done from the academic point of view, not done from a society point of view. And so we want to take them to the next level. I don't know if I actually gave you the good enough example, but this is sort of what we're working with. No, it, it did, it really did. So from what I'm hearing, then the onus is really on professors and instructors to have projects or inclusivity in their coursework that are that promotes social responsibility. I think that's one side of the coin. Uh, mm -hmm. It's quite possible that uh, the reason I say it is I think students have more power than we give them credit for. And I would like to give them even more power. Mm -hmm. Example, if it's my class in analytics and I have you know students say, hey, we're interested in doing this analysis of this uh, whatever data set from the city. There's a Chicago, city of Chicago portal has a bunch of data. Let's say they grab something and say, we think that there's inequity in this allocation of resources and how the pot, how the, you know, uh, sidewalk or crosswalks are fixed across the neighborhoods. And we think blah, blah, blah. I may not have had the idea to do this myself as a faculty member and they would be able to say, okay, let's do this for a course project. Sure, I would approve it, but maybe I'm still blind to social responsibility. Maybe I still don't know how to take it to the next level. Right. But I would be able to supervise the stats part of this, the data mining part of this, the programming part of this, and then Soremo can wrap it up. Right. Soremo can say, oh, you guys, <laughs> there's huge potential here. Here's what you can do. And then it's really on students, which is why there's this fellowship, right? The student fellows who would apply and actually become fellows would be paid to do this because they need to drive the sore <laughs> part of the project where the modeling and stuff can be done under the faculty member, but the students are empowered to do more. Oh, wow. Yes, that's fantastic. So in terms of the coursework, <clears throat> you give me an example, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> rocking my throat. You gave an example of a coursework that <clears throat> was uh, spun out of a professor's project and that was something that was very impactful. What other courses are offered that focus on social responsibility or that have an aspect of social responsibility? So we're actually, the core faculty of this initiative are currently putting together the list of courses that we think are, uh, we should call, you know, Soremo approved or, you know, Soremo flagged or what, how you want to call it. Because there are several courses that I'm not even personally aware of that cover this. So for example, in computer science, there's ethics, like there's ethics in different disciplines, Right. Um, you know, um, humanities obviously has lots of communication courses and outreach courses. And so I don't think I have a short list or a long list, but there's a work in progress list. These courses are not new there. We're basically extracting what I, Illinois tech already does and just saying, Hey, 
in your course objective, you have listed that students will become aware of fair data collection processes, for example, in our intro to statistics in the math department. That's a social responsibility issue. So we're gonna flag it as such and make sure that that's actually delivered every semester the course is taught. Um, and so, but in the future, I think we will have some kind of a cohort taught course that people do across the board. It will take a year or so probably to get that started because we are building it from the ground up. Got it. I know you mentioned this <clears throat> initially, but like so many other initiatives, the research and talent are there to address the social problem. But the run into communication issues, this is something that you mentioned prior. So we've seen this like occurring in other, uh, other different aspects, not just in computing and data and analysis and mathematics, right? We've seen this in climate change research, for example, where, or more recently in the spread of COVID-19 and the efficacy of preventative, preventative measures. Uh, the CERMO initiative does, uh, does it also work to equip researchers with a set of tools to help bridge this communication gap, or are they, relegated to say, <clears throat> going back and taking the sort of more approved or guided courses and humanities to improve the communication. Or <clears throat> I can give you another example. Training, <clears throat> this communication is one example. It could be something as training public relations, uh, marketing, and other sort of the, the other skills in the similar <clears throat> perspective. So this is exactly the problem we want to address. You like hit the nail on the head. Our key goal is communication training. It seems hidden from what I said, but I sort of hinted. So what you ask gets to the heart of the motivation why this fellows program needs to exist. Not just the Soremo as the initiative, but to support the students to go through this. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a formal answer, but let me start with just a quick personal anecdote. When you graduate with a math degree, as you know, particularly with a PhD, oh. you are told, first of all, who are you and what do you do, right? So you meet people on the street and this is my pet peeve. I ask a student now, you know, what do you do? Oh, I've studied the oscillation of solutions. Of the <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> do you know anything about me? What's my background? Am I a mathematician? Even if I am, do I work in your area? I can't follow what you're telling me. It's too technical. Yet you have this imposter syndrome. You want to solve, you know, just, it's, and so then I was told that I was graduating, okay, come up with a one minute elevator speech. What you do? It still sounds the same though. <laughs> so we are told that we don't know how to communicate well to the outside world. We're told that math needs, I'm speaking of math because I come from math, but this is true for all technical disciplines, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, we, we still lack the training on how to deliver this information. We know we're not good at it. We know we need to work on it. You know, we put on the white collar shirt and we say these words and we're not quite there yet. I still have a hard time talking to people in industry whom I hang around a lot. <laughs> and then they say, wow, you do math. What is there to do? And first I was like, oh, I roll. But then I realized, no, actually it is my job. <laughs> to be, it's my duty to be able to say these things in a way that people can understand. And so using myself as a bad example of how to communicate, we all need to get training on how to communicate these ideas. Because if I had the best solution for the city of Chicago as a PhD student, I would not have been able to reach out and tell them about it. You would need the link of somebody who knows how to talk about this. <laughs> and so this is why I say communication is a key. Uh, you identified it. In a nutshell, what our fellows whom we would fund would do, they're students who are passionate about this social responsibility they have sound technical knowledge, they have experience in let's say applied research. They are key players in this event we're gonna call the forum, the flagship event. This is the multidisciplinary se seminar, not interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. We're building this ground up. They will discuss issues, challenges, solutions, roadblocks, and innovative ideas. They will be standing in front of a broad audience of people who come from faculty, external advisors, other students, and tell people about this. And then everybody's job will be to raise a hand and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so this is extensive oral and written communication training where they have to explain these ideas, write about them, go through a peer review process, faculty supervised, but the students do all of the work and we sort of hone them through this and the fact that there would be a humanities faculty member and a statistics, or I should say applied mathematics faculty member and a computer scientist and a designer in the same group asking these questions would force the students to figure out how to reach out because once you graduate and go get a job, it's a bit, I mean, it's not never too late, but it's better to sort of do this ahead of time. And then you can probably 
build a better workforce this way anyway. You can sell yourself better. You can get a better job. You can make an impact now instead of later. Absolutely, um, yeah. Right. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Communication is something that you never actually stop learning. Right. Probably I'm still learning about communication, communicating to different people in different ways, yep. even while I'm in industry. So it, it's something that never ends. I, I don't think it does, yeah. Your anecdote about your one-minute elevator uh, pitch about your thesis is cracked me up because I had mine. My, my version of that was explaining my thesis to a nine-year-old in a manner that they can understand. Aha, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But it makes sense. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely does. Yes, and I still, you know, I still use that sort of explanation that I heard decades ago. There you go. <laughs> decades ago. Today, when people ask me, "So, what was your thesis on?" I still, it just comes automatically. That's the one that comes, and I use it all the time. But it's the only one that's understandable. You can't <laughs> recite the abstract to people. I mean, yeah. right. So follow up on that last insightful conversation um, or topic. Do you foresee collaboration with other departments? I know you talked about multidisciplinary sort of, but do you see, foresee collaboration in a different way with other departments outside of the STEM field? You mentioned humanities and right. um, design. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think the way we started is we, we started in-house from the College of Computing because it made sense. There were people interested in this. You know, we are the ones who uh, uh, <laughs> often deal with the data and then, you know, what happens next. But across across different departments at Illinois Tech, mm-hmm. people are doing all kinds of social responsibility things. And it doesn't make any sense not to connect to them. Mm-hmm. And so um, um, we're, we are we sort of grew outward and we are now involving every college um, except for one uh, for technical reasons of communicating online and trying to reach people. But we have, you know, many departments, applied math, computer science, information technology management, humanities, Institute of Design, chemistry, engineering, civil, chemical, biological. So we do have faculty already from these different disciplines. Not all of them are in STEM. And I think you could say we're in STEAM, right? The, mm-hmm. With the art in there. Um, Right, I, I sort of key. It's sort of key to what we stand for. And you chose a fantastic time to launch this. You launched this in the 20, 2021 academic year, which is not only rife with social issues, but was also a crazy year in terms of us being current quarantine and a pandemic that uh, hopefully we will never see again in our lifetimes. But it's proving to be challenging, not just in terms of the uni- for the universities, but also for nonprofits. How uh, can you talk a little bit about how these first few months have gone, or how you envision that they would change and grow as we move further into 2021? When we decided to start this initiative, it was actually I think July or August 2020, and um, I wrote somewhere, you know, timeline, you know, July bringing people, August, September start, and of course none of that took place because nothing ever takes place on time in 2020. Um, that doesn't mean nothing was happening. We sort of realized that we have to grow. We have to make this truly grassroots. And we spent the fall 2020 semester sort of organizing the activities, the materials, the ideas. How do we involve all departments across the campus? How do we find internal support? Because it's not easy to say, hey, I need money to pay fellowships uh, from an administration who's struggling to keep the university afloat. I mean, this is not a statement about Illinois Tech. This is a global statement. And just, you know, what do I spend money on? So just sort of honing in on what it is that we need to really do and what's essential. We've given up on a lot of uh, very ambitious ideas on how to grow this immediately to research wide, blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna focus right now on student fellows. And so we prepared everything for that. We are now accepting applications for the first cohort. The deadline should be in a couple of days. And we hope to fund some of them this term, spring 2021, and then continue from there. Um, And of course, we are always looking for community stakeholders to join us as external advisors, subject matter experts, corporate donors to see this growth. Um, And I think, I don't want to say the goings are tough because not really, because everybody's passionate about it, but we haven't really started the seminar. I think it will start later this month, or I should say the forum. Okay. Uh, We're going to start the forum later this month. And so we sort of hope to see things grow. So just to reiterate, the way viewers, anyone viewing or hearing about Soremo can support is by, what would you say, what would be the best way or the ways in which people can participate and support Soremo? 
uh, the obvious thing anybody can always say is, why don't you give me money to pay my students? <laughs> right. But that's sort of an underlying, I don't think, I think everybody wants to uh, more funding. I think the best way to, for any viewer who can, who is willing to be involved is involved in whatever way, get involved in whatever way makes sense to you. So connect with us, subscribe to the mailing list, send ideas. Hey, I have this idea. Have you looked at it? Reach out to anybody on the core team. Help us publicize this initiative and thank you for doing this. Uh, help us reach more donors if you are not, uh, if you don't have a couple of bucks to donate. We're looking for donors to invest in this better trained workforce for a better tomorrow. I know it sounds good and it's hard to think about donating, but we're looking for both government industry support. And basically anybody who supports us is, uh, has the potential of just being a collaborator sitting right alongside us as we craft these solutions to these problems. Right. And so if this is something you're passionate about, your organization is passionate about, I would say, please reach out because we can work together for a better tomorrow. Fantastic. Well, that's, that's, that's all for today, folks. You've heard about social responsible modeling and computation and design, Sorima. Thank you, Sonia, for joining us again. I really appreciate it. This was fantastic. Um, everyone, you heard her, you go on to soramo.org and you can find out more information, reach out to anyone that's on there to see how you can participate or support them. For more, for more data science insights and future installments of Data Science Simplified, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Data Products. You can also follow us on Facebook at Data Products LLC, on Twitter at Data Products. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.